For Hindus, Srividya is a term you have heard many times, but uh, you have seen classification and classification, fractal layers of hierarchical of classification which is flooded in your brain and hardly you understand what the uh, what the nonsense are they talking about so many different terms and terminologies but hardly do they say that what uh, they meant for what is the physical significance of each with their different different categories or classifications that they are talking about can we find out a simple logistic uh, um, argument that uh, based on this particular surroundings one two three four five points srividya is constituted srividya makes a journey from esoteric uh, energy to quantifiable fields and the practice of nyasa the the pacing uh, specific uh, phonemes on the fingertips, the cranial nerves and the thoracic zones maps precisely onto the high density nodes of the peripheral lumbar system that is uh, median ular plexus and trigeminal flesh facial network and cardiac ganglia. So these three things are uh, activated uh, activated by this kind of um, uh, practices. So finite, finite element head model so that vocalizing um, uh, the voiced uh, retroflex uh, and and this kind of consonants um, helps a lot in in transforming the the peripheral peripheral nervous system. As I told earlier, that we, in the hospital we measured the DDG and we found that this particular region in the forehead is responsible for consciousness. When the person comes back from conscious, uh, unconscious state after anesthesia, this part is the is the is the part that is um, activated, uh, that is activated uh, in the in the last uh, last phase of the um, uh, of it. And uh, we'd like to say that um, if you do this uh, nyasha practices uh, and then try to and try to, and carry out the frontal central EEG coherence measurement or vagal tone that is um, HF HRV measurement then you can rank different kind of NASA NASA sequences um, as uh, uh, as uh, and link it to the to the neurogenesis four gradations of Japa uh, Vak uh, Madhyama Pashanti and Para this, this all these four uh, different phases people have studied fmri um, and that is functional fmri and they have found that especially during this um, during this uh, this process and uh, uh, process the, the pmc dn excess uh, excess is upregulated and uh, exactly the resolution described in para japa so so for every single classes of japa there are, there are certain description how your nervous system would get changed and you can see that reflection in fmri uh, measurements there is a prediction that from madhyama uh, classes of japa to pashanti classes of japa there are exactly um, 100 counts so if if um, if we test uh, test with a, with a duodecanogram uh, again 108 cycle of panchadasha uh, and uh, and we we, we simultaneously record eeg and the duodecanogram our and and also near near uh, infrared spectroscopy then we should see the phase space trajectory and and we can very verify that that entire neural dy dynamics is connected in and to an to an att attractor where Lupanov exponent is less than zero. So basically, if there is an attractor, that means the dynamics that flows randomly, slowly, slowly, slowly moves towards a convergence point. So that, if it happens, then we can we can we can confirm that that the, the very particular transformations among different kind of japas um, uh, or, or modes of of Sri Vidya, uh, would be um, uh, would be experimentally verified. Third critical feature is Homa. Uh, volatile cyclo uh, phytochemistry and uh, um, aerosolized immunity so so homa or this um, so fire and water which one is the is the key um, key pathway for um, uh, for uh, energy transfer so some people say it is water because one well, because my, i also have a hypothesis that water wanted to be conscious water wanted to be conscious that's why it created uh, the life form so even from even uh, the single uh, smallest helix of the alpha alpha helix uh, chain in a, in a single protein molecule um, to to the entire whole body is connected by water and there is also fire 
but fire is um, is or homa in sri vidya homa mixture is uh, is ghee sesame sandalwood and uh, yugal um, google resin and so all these four mixtures and uh, and people have done the study and they have they have seen that when they, uh, in a in a room um, with a 30 cubic meter and uh, and they they 20 to 70 70 microgram per meter cube within within 7 minutes 65% uh, of the uh, airborne gram positive bacteria got got um, got reduced and influenza a virus got um, i mean got killed by i mean by 47% so nih protocol of uh, 42c was was maintained in the in this is kind of study so sri vidya has been verified however uh, i would like to like to um, uh, like to emphasize on agni over uh, over apa salilam salilam bari so when we talk about the quantum information processing that is one thing but thermal oscillations and agni are a duality two part of the same coin you can't separate it so all the debates that i'm seeing um, for the vedic scholars i don't like it you are diverting the topic the 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 fractal uh, water chain i i understand 77 percent of my body is water the water channel is there but it's a, it's a, from the single atomic molecule to the largest part of the body entire thing is interconnected it's a very complex uh, complex network that is out there however when we are talking about uh, about agni then it's a different thing because because the thermal energy it's in the terahertz domain and the and the water channel infrared uh, infrared is higher band of terahertz nearly to the photon and uh, uh, majority of the protein oscillations is in the microwave region so so thermal is in the middle um, and the water channels the communication is much higher uh, 10 to the 15 10 to the 16 hertz and 10 to the 9 hertz is the proteins uh, helical cycles and that kind of information processing so that's why fire or this this thermal region 5 to 6 terahertz region is the most important part for um, uh, for knowledge and that's why it is uh, a part of srividya so uh, so you have to understand and avoid getting into this kind of divide uh, fire versus water so you all know about uh, kundalini and you uh, you know that from phragmatic breathing that is so pura kumbhak rechak so this is part of uh, ajapa japa of um, of srividya so it has been found that uh, through the spinal cord there is a 0.3 to 0.6 millivolt a kind of Kind of kind of rhythmic oscillations and in duodecanogram ddg we have found that just beside the heart chakra uh, the triplet that we ob observe from 6 megahertz to 26 megahertz the middle part around 15 to 16 megahertz we found that four peaks uh, this is unique type of oscillation that you cannot find anywhere in the human body part just beside you know, behind the heart chakra and that actually gets triggered um, when you do ajapa japa so it's a, the neuroelectric soliton is 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 generated and that is kind of a foundation of the uh, of the kundalini chakra uh, awakening of of, of kundalini. kundalini so uh, so this uh, this particular kind of concept that amrita secretion the amrita comes out of your of your cranial of your cranial nerves and they call it as a sweet cranial cranial drip <laughs> in Srividya. So this particular feature is, co is correlated with the nasopalatal nitric oxide spikes. So that, that you that you get up by 800 ppb um, parts per billion. So, so 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 increase in the nitric oxide by just by by breathing and diap pragmatic phragmatic breathing is integral part of the kundalini rising and that kind of practices. So uh, so so th this is another fourth feature of um, of Srividya. If you think about the four uh, concepts that I have introduced to you about Sri Vidya uh, today morning uh, with, um, with, uh, with, 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 with fingering on your track, uh, holding the breathe, uh, uh, instant third eye, um, pointing to a point, uh, pointing to a particular um, particular center, generating nectar like um, a cranial, uh, cranial uh, honey flow, and then then rising up of, of the lotus all these are kind of 
so 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 neuro neuro circuits um, uh, triggering a very particular composition collective composition of neuro circuital rhythms i would say so that is kind of uh, the the kundalini kundalini surge and uh, and um, and and this is an integral part and this long route by which uh, um, uh, breathing sound touching and uh, and and transforming this collective nested collective rhythms and uh, is the is the foundation of of sri vidya so in summary sri vidya is a uh, biophysical um, program uh, developed uh, uh, over uh, centuries and centuries maybe millennia of practices where several uh, fundamental things you hear, you listen to a very particular mantra you create a pretty particular japa so sound synchronization you look at a particular point and raise the third eye so visual stimulation you take the breathing and change the nitric oxide in momentarily for some time in the body and you try to regenerate a very particular rhythm throughout the spinal cord and so so five of our sensors touch um, uh, breathing um, uh, and listening and then of course um, uh, speaking and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 not testing so i would say four different sensors you you collect them together and then you transform the the collective rhythm of the body that is the foundation of sri vidya so um, please uh, comment uh, if anything i have missed because i know you know all the terms and terminologies on the all, all the fundamental things but these are the particular features of research work that is there that has been done not done by us but several others and we are now advancing this research towards new direction so uh, your comment would be very useful